Hello everybody, uh, welcome to another video. Now in this video I'm going to be having a look at some of the comments, some of the questions and some of the video responses that you guys have been leaving me um, recently. Now anyone who has commented on my video historically, uh, one of my videos sorry, um, would see that I do uh, do my utmost to reply to everyone. Um, if I haven't responded to your comment just yet, if you posted it in the last day or so, um, I will get around to it. This is a lot of these now are from the um, that feeling, the short film video that I did. Um, I was really pleased with that. Uh, as I said at the time, I'm not a, an actor, I'm not a director, um, and I'm quite new to video editing as well. So it's it's a bit rough around the edges. I have noticed some inconsistencies with the times and all the rest of it. Um, to be honest, I shot all the, the like the footage, you know, in in sort of an hour or so, and then just went back and sort of pieced it all together in my spare time. Um, I've mentioned in my previous videos, I am still working full time at the moment, so uh, I have to kind of fit in. Um, editing and stuff when I get a chance, fitting the videos when I get a chance. Um, so nothing's maybe quite as polished as, as maybe I'd like it to be. Uh, fingers crossed one day maybe I can uh, I can sort of do do a bit more of this uh, sort of more full time. Um, but at the moment, obviously, it's uh, you know I don't I don't make a penny out of anything I do, so um, I have to realistically um, juggle it with with actual work. So a few responses here that I haven't actually got a chance to. I reply to you yet. So we'll start down here um, where C Duck says, um, I just wish I could stop. Have you ever thought of setting up a Wii Forum for all sorts of chat on? Um, now, I would, uh, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Uh, you know, what I would say in the meantime, I mean, it's something I'll look into. I don't know how easy it is to do, uh, to be honest. Um, I don't know, you know, I want to know that it was being kind of used, if you know what I mean. Um, at the moment, I have 600 odd subscribers, which is fantastic. Really, really pleased with that. What I wouldn't want to do is set up a forum um, that's not very well used, because what will happen then is if people might go there and post on there um, if they've got troubles, if they're, if they're struggling, and then they might not get a get a response or a, you know a reply to their questions or reply to their their pleas for help or whatever um, in a timely fashion. And I think actually that could possibly do possibly do more harm than good. So what I want to do is if I do go ahead and, and set up a forum. Is you know make sure that uh, it's going to be going to be quite well used. Um, what I have liked to see actually with the comments recently is not only am I trying to reply to every comment, but a lot of you guys are responding to each other's comments. A lot of sympathy, a lot of empathy going on, a lot of advice, um, some some tough love in some places, which I've left on there because sometimes actually you know self pity isn't you know necessarily the, the solution to our problems. We do sometimes need that proverbial kick up the arse. So that's really good to see because what I, I like to think of this this YouTube channel as is. It's not so much just a YouTube channel where I come on here and chat to you guys and give you my experiences and my opinions and all the rest of it. Um, it's I like to think of it more of as like a little bit of a little bit of a community um, where we can all kind of talk to each other and uh, you know help each other out, and support each other through you know good lengths of recovery, but also through lapses and relapses and and other problems. So yes, I'd love to do the forum thing. Um, I will look into it. Um, I'll look into you know how easy it is to set up. I presume there's probably kind of you know, cut and paste forums you can sign up to online, uh, and I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to see that. Um, someone actually asked a while ago as well, uh, off the back of that, would I consider doing a live stream um, where I come on live and uh, I answer your questions? Um, again, I would say the same thing. Yes, I'd, something I'd love to do. Um, it would be really cool to actually speak to you guys live and um, you know, sort of answer your questions and actually have a, more of a conversation. Um, again, my concern would be the same. You know, I really, really appreciate the fact that you, you guys are subscribing and that you're following the videos and you're watching the videos and you're commenting. But at the moment, my channel is still pretty small, um, and my concern would be setting up a live stream and then you know no one, no one attending it. So if it's something you think you'd be interested in, do let me know. Um, and obviously, if there is enough interest, then it, it's it's something I'm very happy to do. Um, I'd need to again fit it around my work schedule and what have you. But um, yeah, I'd be lovely to to sort of chat to to all these people that have been commenting. Um, and actually, sort of have a bit of a back and forth rather than you comment and then you know a couple of days later I respond and you know and it'd be like that. So great idea on the forum. I'd, I'd, that is something I'd love to do. Um, but like I say, I'd really want to make sure that there was good conversation on there and the people were getting the support maybe when they were posting. And at the moment, with the number of subscribers I've got, and uh, you know, whilst it's it's incredibly appreciated and and some of the the love I've been getting recently has been been fantastic and I've really appreciated it. Um, you know, we, we're a great community, but at the moment we're not a huge one. And I think uh, a sort of a quiet forum could actually be more harmful than, than no forum at all. But uh, I love the idea. Um, I'm just going through these as I, as I see them, by the way. So uh, my apologies if this video is a bit bit disjointed. Um, James Luth, there's a few people here actually who really related to that regret video, um, that feeling as I called it. I couldn't really think what to title it. And I remember the um, 
you know, the bandit, um, the streamer. Now, I won't talk about streamers unless it comes up in one of the questions below, um, because I know it can split opinions, but I know he does talk a lot about that feeling you get. So that's why I called it that feeling, because, uh, yeah, when you wake up in the morning and then you get that real punched in the stomach feeling. Um, and as you remember, the, the loss the, the night before. Um, so it's it's... It's great that so many people relate to it because that was kind of the point. And um, the point was that people could watch that video and go, yep, I know that feeling. And it, it makes you feel like you're not alone. You know, this is something that happens to so many of us. And it, it clearly does from your comments. So thank you to everyone um, who's, who's, you know, there's, there's a load here. Um, Janie, thank you very much for your, your comment. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, I read your, your story actually about um, you getting a your daughter to open an account so you could gamble. Um, now, you know, I've I've heard people use all sorts of, of loopholes to, to allow themselves to gamble. One thing I would say about that is if you are considering setting up an account in someone else's name, um, then the, the chances are, you know, you could end up without you getting your, your money. Uh, you know, let's face it, online casinos, online gambling companies will use any excuse to not pay you out. So if they get wind of the fact that you're doing something that's, um, you know, not straight down the line, um, then the chances are they could re withhold your any winnings you have anyway. So it makes the whole thing even more futile than it would be normally. Um, Trevor, cheers Trev for your, your comment, mate. Um, Trevor, if you don't know who Trevor is, uh, Trevor makes uh, videos on YouTube. Um, he is um, a recovering uh, addict, um, a compulsive gambler. Um, and I say that because that's how Trevor refers to himself. He refers to himself as a compulsive gambler. So um, I, whilst it's weird because I don't, Although we suffer from the same addiction, and although we're very in a similar place in terms of our recovery, I don't refer to myself as a compulsive gambler, but Trevor does. And as I always say, you know, whatever whatever approach you take to this, if it's working, then you stick with it, don't you? And uh, it's brilliant to hear that it's working for for Trevor, and thank you for your, your great comments, mate. Um, what would you, would you do a video about on the Fobsies then, mate? Please tell me where you started on them and how much you lost in them. Scott, thanks very much for your comment. Um, I think Scott's quite a new subscriber. I've seen a few of his comments recently, uh, so thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, I have made a few videos on fob tees in the past. If you go through my videos and see the ones with all the dislikes, they'll be the ones on fob tees. So I, I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Um, if we leave aside the, the randomness and all of that, fob tees, in my eyes, are the worst form of gambling. Um, they are one of the most accessible forms of gambling because let's face it bookies are on every high street um, and in some local shops and all the rest of it um, also the stakes are relatively high uh, the cap on the winnings is relatively low and the RTPs of turn to player a percentage is also relatively low when you compare it to playing the same games for example uh, online so whilst I would never advocate gambling online um, as I think it's got its own inherent dangers uh, there is no neat reason to play FOBT games. Um, they are too accessible, the percentage of returns are too low, and the, the, the caps uh, on the, the winnings are, are too low and the stakes are too high. So there's really no reason to play FOBTs. Um, but, as I say with everything, if you cut off your normal form of gambling, say you normally do gamble online and you've installed GamStop, then make sure you exclude yourself from the bookies as well. This addiction is very insidious, it's very crafty. If you've excluded yourself online, then you know that you can go and play similar games on the FOBTs. Yes, you know underneath it all that you're getting a worse deal, but let's face it, for gamblers, winning is really only part of the uh, you know, part of the battle, isn't it? A lot of the time we're not playing to win, we're playing to, to gamble, we're playing to scratch that itch and get that, that dopamine hit um, from the gambling. So yeah, if you're, even if properties aren't your thing, if you are quitting gambling, go and self-exclude from your local bookmakers. Use the National Self-Exclusion Scheme. I will try and remember to put the link in the description below. If not, I know it was in the link, it was in the description of the video before, so just click on that. And uh, yeah, there's a link on there for your National Self-Exclusion Scheme. So I'm sure properties will come up again in conversation, Scott. Um, I won't make another specific video about them at the moment. Um, but if you do have a little look through, there's a few videos on FOBTs on my channel. Um, like I say, often the most controversial ones, apart from the ones I do about um, affiliate, you know, casino affiliates and you know, casino streamers and things like that. Um, very much a you know, divider of opinions, and that's that's cool. Um, Chris, another one who, who you know understands the um, the feeling. How old were you, Luke? When you how old were you uh, when you started gambling? Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess in a sense, I mean, I've been gambling since I was a, a, a kid. Um, 
I used to go down to the seaside with family uh, weekends or whatever. We don't, we didn't live far from from sort of our local seaside resorts, and we used to go down there and used to play the two p, two p fruit machines. Obviously, two p pushers um, seemed very harmless at the time. Uh, unfortunately, that got me interested in fruit machines. Actually, specifically, not so much. Um, gambling as a whole I wasn't really you know as a kid you're not really that interested in gambling but I was quite fascinated by fruit machines I developed a bit of a, an unhealthy fascination with them as I was growing up um, which led me to playing fruit machines a lot more regardless of the gambling element but obviously as I got older that then you know developed into more of a gambling thing um, I became sort of then more addicted to the gambling side and rather than just liking the flashing lights and the spinning reels and being interested by all the you know the intricacies and the features on these games I became more interested in the gambling side and the winning and losing of money and um, yeah from there obviously that then progressed into other forms of gambling as and when you know as a younger person they became became available to me so I would say I was probably six or seven possibly when I first played Fruit Machine uh, possibly even younger than that playing a 2p pusher at the, the seaside or uh, you know when we went to Butlins as a kid or whatever um, so yeah, very young and um, pretty much dominated most of my adult life as well. So it doesn't matter what age you start, the uh, the best time to stop is always now. Um, not speaking, non-gamblers I've spoken to simply cannot grasp what makes normal and genuinely clever people gamble. Um, I paraphrase there, Archdeacon. Um, I'll, you know, Archdeacon's a great guy. Always comments on my videos. Very, very supportive of the channel. So thanks, mate. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, I think. Because because there's no common sense reason to gamble. Um, I did say this in this video, didn't I? Um, people who sort of look at it from the outside, who've never gambled or maybe gamble very very lightly, very recreationally, maybe at the odd football bet here and there, they don't understand, um, you know, why someone like myself um, and I class myself as reasonably well educated, I, you know, quite sensible um, in so many ways of my life, but gambling just lo made me lose all logic, all common sense. You, you you play start playing a fruit machine. You know that you're playing, you know, um, like an eighty percent payout. So you know that on average you're playing a pound of spin. You're losing twenty p every go, and I know that. And you know, it, it, but and I always understood that. And I understood the intricacies of how these games work. But unfortunately, that that urge, that that you know, craving inside you for you know the, the dopamine and for the rush that the, the, you know the suspense of whether you're going to win or lose gives you. Um, unfortunately, that craving can, can well very easily overcomes your your common sense, which is why uh, you know quitting using willpower alone is so it, you know is, is so flawed. We already know that um, you know we're going to lose, uh, as Les Lemmy once said, "Gambling so fools." Um, you know we know we're going to lose. So if it was down to you know mental uh, mental you know, uh, what's the mental strategy, mental ability, um, you know we wouldn't gamble. But we do, so there must be a, a there must be another reason, which is why we need the practical blocks and stuff in place to to prevent us gambling as we go forward. Um, and if I'm skipping over your comments, by the way, my apologies. Um, I probably replied to you personally. Uh, I do. I'm thankfully I get loads of comments. That's great, and I'm still replying to everyone. Um, this is something that I was was saying actually. This is great. Look, um, we've actually got members of, of you know our community. Um, I don't, <laughs> it's a bit of a wanky word isn't it, but I really do feel like it's a bit like a community now um, and people responding to each other and supporting each other and I think that's absolutely fantastic. Um, the other one from, from Trevor, uh, yeah and a lot of people were saying um, about this that um, I was obviously quite, uh, come from quite a well-to-do family, I, I, I mean I came from a, a reasonably comfortable lower sort of upper working class possibly possibly lower middle class family um you know and i didn't i didn't want um i was gonna say i didn't want for anything that, that sounds like i was spoiled i didn't get everything i wanted but i had what i needed and i wasn't you know i wasn't one of these kids who was bought everything they wanted i wasn't someone who got stupid amounts of presents at christmas you know but i was taken on holiday i was cared for i always had you know, nice shoes and clothes and stuff. Not designer, but just you know, I was yeah, I was I had a great childhood, and and that's all I can say really. Um, so, but the point people are making, I think, is that regardless of whether you come from a, a an upper middle class, lower middle class, upper working class, lower working class background, um, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, everyone everyone in life has opportunities, and gambling leads you to squander. A lot of those. So whether you, you know, you're born with loads of opportunities or very few, 
Um, if you bought up with loads of opportunities, it's very easy to lose them through gambling. Um, but if you don't gamble, if you if you work hard and you stay on the right path and you stay away from it, you don't need too many opportunities to really build yourself up. Um, and you know, so where you start is is very unimportant, uh, really compared to where you end up. I always think. Um, so, uh, candy coated poison, great username. A good video. I feel something I've left you thought about. Maybe as a part three, you can address the smaller population, I guess, of younger people who are getting decent cash and live at home. Yes, um, I'm not sure I can make a whole video of this, but I think it is an important thing to consider. Gambling, particularly sports gambling now and sports betting, is targeted so much more towards younger people, towards the younger generations. And the reason is for exactly that reason. They know that this is the group that have the most disposable income. Um, you know, in the, in the same way as they've now you know, started targeting uh, women a lot more with gambling, it's an untapped resource, and, and particularly with younger people, like you say, living at home, or maybe they're at university and they've got their university loans or whatever, um, you know, and they've got a lot more disposable income than someone maybe my age who's got the house and bills and rent and cars and stuff to look after. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can't give any advice that I don't give to anyone, which is, if you haven't started gambling, don't start. And if you've started and you feel it's coming any kind of a problem at all, even that one bad feeling, not not the thing that you've lost, because that's pretty standard, but if you feel like, actually, I, I shouldn't really have spent that money, then do something about it now. Because, I've said it before, the best time to stop gambling is the very first time you gamble. The second best time to stop gambling is now. Whatever you, Whether you're 20, whether you're 30, 40, 50, 60, you know, gambling will have taken away part of your life. Don't let it take any more. Doesn't matter how old you are, don't let it take any more of your life. Get draw a line under it now. And the recovery will take time. This is the uh, the one I did about the, the painful truth of gambling recovery. In fact, it doesn't happen overnight, but it won't happen at all unless you start now. So, yes, if you're young and you're getting into gambling and you think in any level that maybe you you know you're doing it a little bit too much, maybe you're spending a little bit too much money, you're getting maybe you're getting a bit too mentally involved in it. Maybe you're not enjoying football anymore, you know, because you've got too many bets going on, that's all that matters. Then draw a line under it, stop. Do something about it. Get get help with it. Um, you know, and if you can just stop, then great. If you're struggling, links in the description as always for Gam Care and Gam Stop and all the other resources you need to, to really push on and, and and crack on with your recovery. Cheers for your cheers for your question. I just decided I'd ban online and just want to say have a little amount of football bets. Yep, uh, Mr. Useless. Uh, yep, um, that was originally I intended to do that. Uh, I intended to sort of stop the the online stuff and I intended to stop the um, you know the, the machines and stuff and the fob tees and I was just going to let myself have a little bit of a, a punt on the football because I never bet a lot in football it was like maybe a few couple of five quid hackers or something on the weekend and it never in my eyes never caused me any problems so it was never an issue um, however I did actually stop because I thought well what I'll do is I'll stop that for now and then you know maybe I'll reintroduce it at a later stage and I, I found that I stopped it and I, I never went back and I don't know whether that's because psychologically to me it was gambling and I was doing well abstaining or whether it's because I was worried that actually that little bit of excitement that little bit of dopamine you get from watching the scores come in and with Jeff on a Sunday afternoon or a Saturday afternoon would maybe be enough to sort of reignite the you know the cravings in my head for, for sort of more and uh, more damaging kinds of gambling so if that works for you mate really good luck to you um, like I say it was originally my plan my plan mutated because I found what I was doing was working. So, um, you know what? I think I think I'm going to leave it for that now. There's loads more comments, loads more questions. So I'll probably make a part two, uh, but I don't want to keep you guys all day. I'm sure you've got much better, more important things to be doing than watching me waffle on. But um, really, really appreciate your comments. Keep them coming. Um, always a pleasure to uh, to read them. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you guys on the next one. Yeah, cheers for watching.